Good evening. Tonight's meeting is called uh, to order for the tonight's meeting is called to order for the public hearing concerning docket number 19-EDEPDE-223-RTS. This docket was initiated by Empire's request for a rate increase. I am Dwight Keene. I'm chairman of the Kansas Corporation Commission. My colleague, uh, Commissioner Sherry Feist Albrecht, uh, joins me in welcoming you and thanking you for attending this public hearing. Uh, Commissioner Immler is unable to join us this evening. We look forward to hearing your comments, which will become a part of the official record and play an important role in the decision-making process in this case. Tonight's hearing will have two parts. The first part of this evening's meeting, you will hear presentations from Empire's representatives, the Citizens Utility Ratepayer Board, or CURB, and from Commission staff. The Commission will not be present during this part, part one. Part one will be moderated by the Deputy General Counsel to the Commission, Brian Fedoten. Part two is the formal comment period that will be transcribed by the court reporter and added to the official record in this matter. The commissioners will be present for that part, for part two. Thank you again for attending this evening's meeting. Uh, I'm off to a uh, rousing start. Um, hello, my name is Brian Fedoten. I'm the pre-hearing officer assigned to this docket. I'll be moderating the first half of this proceeding. Um, before we begin, I'd like to introduce some of the key people and the parties in this case. I'm at, and if the staff members that aren't on stage could, could stand or wave when, when I mention you, I'd, it'd be appreciated so everybody knows who you are. Um, several members of the Commission's Public Affairs and Consumer Protection team uh, are here this evening, and they've been instrumental in arranging and setting up this public hearing. We have Linda Berry, um, Steve Boyd, is he, he, Steve's in the back of the room, um, and Jerry Lippert, who's also in, in the back of the room. So, uh, for Empire, we have uh, Tim Wilson, who is the Central Regional Director uh, of Electric Operations Services for Empire. And we have Jill Schwartz, the Senior Manager for Rates and Regulatory Affairs for Empire. Uh, on behalf of CURB, we have David Nickel, the Consumer Counsel for CURB. CURB by law represents a specific segment of the general public investi and investigates the company's application. Uh, next to him is Todd Love, also an attorney at CURB. Um, then we have Cole Bailey uh, of the litigation staff for the, the uh, utilities division of the commission. He will explain how staff investigates Empire's application. Next to him is Robert Vincent, senior litigation counsel for the utilities division staff. I'd also like to note our court reporter, Sean Higgins, uh, will be recording part two of the public hearing later this evening. Um, with that, we're ready to begin the presentations, and we will start with, with Empire. Uh, and so, uh, Mr. Wilson and Ms. Schwartz, I'll hand it over to you. All right. So this just covers a few of the things that we wanted to, to share with you this evening. So uh, one of the first things that we'll do is, is a safety moment, and I'll explain that in a moment. Um, but we'll take the opportunity to talk about our current rates in Kansas, some of the investments that we have made since our last general rate case, uh, our involvement in our Kansas communities, and a little bit of information about the application that we filed with the Kansas Corporation Commission. So safety is very important to us at Liberty Utilities and Empire District. One of the things that we like to do is when we have a meeting uh, with five or more employees, we start each meeting with a safety moment. It's a good opportunity to take a moment and remind each other about the importance of safety and being safe. And so they can be 
any, any kind of uh, safety message, something that happened personally, usually that's, that's what we try to do is share something that has happened to us personally and use that as an opportunity to learn from it. Uh, the safety moment that I'd like to share with you this evening, I've uh, been thinking about it and I've noticed that as the weather is getting warmer and the days seem to be getting longer now that the time has changed, uh, I've noticed that there are more kids, mine included, running around outside in the neighborhood. And so when I come and go and pull in and out of the driveway, there's kids and, and pets and, and just more activity outside. And so just take a moment to check your mirrors and make sure that it's all clear before you back out um, to the driveway, onto the road. There's lots of activity and it would be uh, a, quite a tragedy to, you know, have an accident with uh, a child or a pet. I have my dog run up to me all the time as I'm coming home, so I always have to make sure she's out of the way. So the company's current rates were established back in 2012. Uh, we haven't had um, a base rate increase since then, um, although we have had some rate changes since then. In 2015, we put into effect the Asbury Environmental Cost Recovery Rider, which allowed us to recover uh, some significant investment that we made at our Asbury Generation uh, facility. In 2017, we rolled that in and included additional investments that we had made at our Riverton, uh, Riverton 12 uh, Generation facility. So we have had some some adjustments to rates and bills through those through the uh, the implementation of those two riders while the base rate changes the monthly charge the per kilowatt hour charge on your bills has remained the same we have been able to make some changes to customers bills and to recover the cost of the investments that we've made in those we also have an ad valorem rider that you'll see on your bill, and that recovers um, changes in taxes that we incur. So there have been, that's something that's adjusted on an annual basis, so you will have seen that change while other things have remained um, constant. And then we also have the energy cost recovery rider that is the pass-through of the, the fuel and the purchase power. So while we have not had a base rate change, since 2012, we have made some changes to the bills and been able to recover some of the investments that we have made that Mr. Wilson will talk a little bit more about. Um, but overall, the, this increase, and we'll talk a little, bit about, a little bit more about this at the end, is requesting an incremental increase of $2.5 million. And, we'll, and then in the last slide, we'll get into a little bit more about what that results um, for the average residential customer. Two of these riders, the Asbury, well, the Asbury Environmental Cost Recovery Rider was rolled into the Asbury Environmental and Riverton Cost Rider in 2017. And with this case, that would come off of the customer's bills um, and it would be rolled into the base rate charge. Good evening. Again, I am Tim Wilson, uh, the Central Region Director of Electric Operations Services for Empire Liberty. And as Joe mentioned, I'm just going to talk about some of the major investments that we've made across our system over the last several years, um, talk about some of the improvements that we've made um, to our, from an outage perspective, and then talk a little bit about uh, our local communities. I uh, very rarely do I get to go and talk about what we do, and, and I'm still fairly local. I'm from Riverton. I graduated from Riverton, and I live in Riverton, so it's nice to get out and be here locally in the community with you guys as well. A little tough to see there. Um, so some, from a generation perspective, as she mentioned, we, we did the Asbury Environmental Upgrades, um, which were um, completed in 2014 at a cost of roughly $122 million. This was the result of the mercury and air toxic standard that uh, was required by the EPA. And so we had two decisions, do you retrofit Asbury uh, with air quality control systems to meet that rule, or do you retire it and build something else in its place? Similarly, um, Riverton 12 conversion to combined cycle, the Riverton 12 unit was originally constructed in 2007, 
we converted it to a combined cycle unit when we retired the, the coal-fired units at Riverton, which were Riverton units seven and eight. Again, this project was the culmination of decisions made that were most economic for us at the time and our customers um, based upon the mercury and air toxic standard. So this was also something that was required by us to do from the EPA. And then we have other generation investments there you see of about $14 million that are typical capital investments that you would make at your power plants during outages, replacements of pumps and those types of things. So in total, our generation investments through this period is about $317 million. Again, most of which uh, was required by EPA mandates. I do want to remind everybody, these are in total dollars. This isn't Kansas's share. Um, this is total dollars and generation total dollars get, get spread differently. So. On the transmission and distribution side of things, you can see we've spent a significant amount of money on our electric uh, transmission and distribution system over the past several years of a total of about $503 million. Again, that's total company and system wide. And we did have uh, something called Operation Toughen Up, which was we were trying to harden our system um, the best that we can in the most economical manner um, in terms of storms. So we implemented um, a few programs there, a lot of tree trimming, you know, squirrel guards and those types of things. It's amazing how many outages we have from squirrels. They're like one of our biggest things. So um, of, of that part, we did spend about uh, 20 million or 31% of that in, in the state of Kansas on Operation Tough Enough because um, that's where we found that we, we had some need there. And I'll show you some statistics here on the next slide that will kind of cover the gradual uh, improvement that we've had with our frequency and duration of outages here in, the, in Southeast Kansas. Um, there's also been several large transmission distribution projects across our system as well that really creates the, the bulk share of the $503 million over this time period that we spent on our transmission and distribution system. I'll mention the statistics here. I always um, miss, we have safety in SADI, and it's a system average interruption frequency index. And then the next slide is a system average interruption duration index. So I think that's the first time I've ever actually got both of those right at the same time. But what you can see here is the graph generally depicts a decline. So this is in frequency. And so the numbers on the left would be number of outages in a year per customer on average that we would see starting in 2011. To 2018 and during that time period as I mentioned we had operation toughen up and it was something that we really focused on from a customer perspective and reliability perspective to reduce the the frequency or the amount of outages that our customers have and also the duration of those outages if you go on to uh, the duration index you can see again the same thing um, it's it's measured uh, very similarly and it's measured the same actually every year um, on this chart you can see that our our system average uh, duration was it's really hard to see up here right now 160 minutes that's in, in minutes um, and it has dropped significantly down to well below uh, 100 at this point in time so Again, this is the culmination of the, the project Toughen Up that, that we implemented several years ago. Well, this is the fun part for me. I, I'm a project guy, I do projects, that's what I do, I love it, but I also, um, one of the things I really love is being out in my community. As I mentioned, I'm from Riverton, and so there's a lot of, a lot of community development um, opportunities that we have and involvements. We did just implement here in Kansas an economic development tariff. Um, Again, that's not only to, to, to help us to get more customers, it's also to help get new businesses in your communities um, as well. So I think that's a great thing that the commission uh, allowed us to do and, and we really look forward to implementing that and making sure that, that uh, we do everything we can to get new businesses uh, into the communities. Um, we have a lot of other community involvement. I think we've, I don't wanna go through all of these. We've, we have sponsored a lot of things. We've been in parades. Um, one of the things that I'm familiar with um, is I know our neighbors uh, to the east, Galena, we've helped them um, uh, with their ball fields, lighting, moving poles, those types of things. I know we have a community cleanup day at Riverton High School where the seniors go and, um, and help those that, that 
have a hard time, uh, especially this time of year, getting out and about themselves and help them pick up uh, sticks and leaves and maybe paint a little bit. And we always sponsor that event and provide uh, food for the students there as well. Um, we are also very involved in career day. Um, we like, especially me, being one of the homegrown kids at, at Empire, we love going to career days and talking to students about what opportunities they might have uh, that are right here locally that they may not know about. Thank you. And just to kind of summarize what I said earlier, so the application that we filed in December with the, with the commission requested an incremental increase in revenue of $2.5 million. The average residential customer uses about 1,000 kilowatt hours per month. And so when we roll into the base rates, the, the Asbury and Riverton rider that is currently um, included and charged as a separate line item on customer's bill, uh, the average increase in the customer's bill would go from about $114.20 to $134.18 based on 1,000 kilowatt hours of usage. So depending on your actual usage, it will be more or less depending on if you if you use more or less kilowatt hours on a monthly basis that um, proposed average bill is a, is approximately um, it's about right in line right in the middle of the west star and the kcpl rates so right in line with um, with the other investor owned utilities in the state of kansas and also a little bit lower than our current effective rates that we have established and approved in the state of Missouri. Um, if you have any questions about um, this or your bills or any billing issues that you may be experiencing or any other issues that you'd like to talk to any of us about afterwards, we have some rep representatives out front that can help answer any questions that you may have about billing. Or if you have any other questions or issues, feel free to, to stop either myself or Tim afterwards or another one of our um, company reps walking around. We'd be happy to, to take any questions and, and talk to you. Uh, thank you, Tim and Jill. Uh, next, we will hear from Curb. Uh, David Nickel. Good evening. Thank you, Brian. My name is David Nickel. I'm consumer counsel with the CURB, Citizens Utility Ratepayer Board of Kansas. Um, I was born in Independence, Kansas, and was raised there until I left to go to law school or college and law school. So I've got to say at the outset, it's a pleasure to be back in Southeast Kansas. Um, innovation has always been embraced by Southeast Kansans. A little fact, some facts you may not know about is that uh, the first commercial oil well in Kansas was drilled in Southeast Kansas in the 1800s. Communities in Southeast Kansas were the very first in Kansas to to receive electric service back in 1909, two years before the Kansas Public Utilities Act was enacted, which allows the Kansas Corporation Commission to regulate utilities. And it wouldn't surprise me to see that somebody from Southeast Kansas may actually invent storage, battery storage that will be the nexus to solar energy throughout the United States. We're an innovative people down here. But tonight we're not here to talk about the past nor are we here to speculate, speculate about the future. What we're here to talk about tonight is a rate case that's been filed by Empire. And to talk about um, how CURB is involved in that. We're here to talk about the rate case that's been filed and CURB's involvement in this particular rate case. CURB is a small Kansas agency that's been created simply to, re to represent uh, small commercial and residential ratepayers 
in uh, the, before the Kansas Corporation Commission and other factor and other other people um, by Kansas statute. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about our involvement in this in this particular case. The first thing I'm going to talk about is our organization and our mission. I'm also going to talk about our involvement in our role in, in utility rate cases. And then finally, I'm going to talk about this particular rate case in general. Under Kansas statutes, we were created by KSA uh, 661222. And under that statute, we have a five member, five member board. The board members are Bob Hall, Clint Patty, uh, Mr. Mullins, uh, Ms. Ms. Janowski, and Henry Hungerbeeler. Your representative here is Clint Patty. He's from the second congressional district. There are four, four uh, congressional districts that are represented by the curb and then one at large member. Um, they direct the activities of the Consumer Council, and uh, then I direct the, the work of my staff. My staff consists of seven members. Uh, those, you. So I have a seven member staff, or a curb is a seven member staff. We have two attorneys, we have two rate analysts that analyze rate cases and other utility matters that are filed with the Kansas Corporation Commission or go before the Kansas legislature. And then we have two administrative staff persons that support us. Todd Love is an attorney with us and he's one of the attorneys of our, of our organization. Now, in any, any utility case, we, we try to work together. So our analysts and our attorneys work together and then we ultimately have the support from our staff to come up with various answers. Uh, to the rate cases that are filed before the Kansas Corporation Commission. Sometimes we hire uh, consultants to help us with rate cases, and in this particular rate case, we have hired four different consultants to help us with the various issues that are filed in this particular rate case. Our mission is simply to represent residential and small commercial rate payers in three different forms. The first is before the Kansas Corporation Commission, the second is before the Kansas legislature. When there's a bill that's been introduced before the Kansas legislature, we will go and testify as to how ratepayers, particularly residential ratepayers or small commercial ratepayers, are affected by those. So we'll testify before the Kansas legislature. And then occasionally we will also appear before the Kansas courts on behalf of residential ratepayers or small commercial ratepayers. So that's our mission that emanates from our Kansas statutes, our enabling statutes. So let's now turn to why that's important. The most important aspect or most important aspects of our work have to do with rate cases. And the reason for that is because it affects you on a daily basis. The amount that you pay for electricity affects the amount of uh, money that you can expend on food, on medicine, and other important needs. It affects our businesses because it makes us less competitive when prices are higher than they would be in other, in other vicinities. So those are the most important things that we believe uh, that we can do to help the residential rate payer and the small commercial rate payer. What is our role? Our role is simply to advocate for the residential and small consumers, small business consumers in rate cases. If you look at the utility is going to present their side of the testimony, and it's going to be obviously uh, tend tending towards proving their side of the case. So our job is to do just the opposite. We present opposite evidence of what the, the utility is going to present. Now that doesn't mean that we get our way and that doesn't mean that the utility gets their way because there's another indispensable party to this and that's the Kansas Corporation Commission and aided by its staff. And they'll take the evidence that the commission will put together, that the commission, that CURB will put together, the commission staff will put together, the utilities will put together and other interveners and attempt to balance the interest of all. And I've got to tell you that the commission takes their job very, very seriously. They, they want to balance the interest fairly and under the law with regard to each rate case that's filed. And they're aided by a staff that's very competent, very dedicated, worked very hard. Mr. Doughton, um, as general counsel, looks over the evidence and advises the commission very well on these types of issues. So uh, I've got to tell you there, it's good to have the Kansas Corporation Commission weighing the evidence and determining what's right and just in, in each and every one of these cases. And I have a lot of confidence in that. So there are a number of issues that we are concerned with regard to this case. And I've got to tell you at the outset that we have not posited evidence yet because we're still studying the issues. But there are a couple issues that stand out to us that we probably will weigh in on. 
The first is rate of return. Uh, Empire is asking for a 10.2 uh, rate of return on common equity. We don't know where we're going to come in on that yet because we're still studying that issue, but relative to other utilities that are in Kansas, electric utilities are earning 9.3. So 10.2 seems a little high to us. Again, it's something that we're looking at. Level of expenses, as Jill pointed out earlier today, uh, level of expenses are such that you're going to see a 20, if the utility gets everything that they want, you're going to see a $20 uh, increase in your bills. We know how difficult that is for some residential consumers, particularly low income or fixed income. And so something that we're going to look very closely at to determine whether or not those uh, expenditures that they made are prudent and reasonable. Not to say that they aren't, uh, but we're looking at that to determine what is the right amount for uh, rate for our, our constituents, our residential and our small commercial rate payers. And then finally, customer charge. And the reason that that's most important to us is because that's very difficult for consumers to control. If it's a customer charge that's rolled in year, uh, month by month by month, you can't really control it by your volume. And so consequently, again, if you're fixed income or you're low income, what that means is it may be difficult for you to pay your bill. Curb generally comes out against, very strongly against an increase in customer charge. We would much prefer to see those increases if there are any increases rolled into the volume charge. And that's something that we're gonna look at because Empire is asking for a $3 increase per month on your customer charge. Not to say that we will come in with any particular evidence on that. And, and there are several other issues that we may become involved in and that we will address. But those are three that are pretty important. Now, CURB is only going to present evidence, and we're only an advocate. We don't get to set rates. That's up to the commission. Uh, and so uh, we'll present our evidence before the commission, but it's only technical evidence. It's only as to what standards really pertain out of Kansas law as it relates to just and reasonable rates. One thing we can't testify to, we cannot testify about how uh, these rates are going to affect you. Only you are competent to testify about how these rates affect you personally. And so we welcome your coming and listening and, and testifying and telling us how these rates will affect you. That's the importance of the, of the public interest um, in testifying in these type of, of matters when they do come up. So thank you so very much for coming and testifying and to listening to um, what CURB does. I hope you've learned a little bit about what CURB does, who we are, what our mission are missions is, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, David. Um, next, we have Cole Bailey, Litigation Counsel, on behalf of Commission staff. Cole. Good evening, folks. Okay, as Brian said, I'm Cole Bailey. I'm an attorney at Corporation Commission, and I represent the commission's technical staff. We're over here. And uh, just for clarity, I don't represent the KCC or the commissioners. I'm an employee at the KCC, and I owe my uh, legal obligation to the staff. All right, tonight I'll be providing an overview of some core functions of the KCC as well as Empire's rate case. This will include information on the docket proceedings, who the commission staff is, how staff will analyze Empire's requests, and how members of the public can stay informed and involved. It's not working again, I'm just gonna talk. Uh, the, the Corporation Commission is a state agency that is made up of three commissioners. They are Chair Dwight D. Keene. He was up here earlier. He'll be back. Uh, Commissioner Sherry Feist Albright, she was also here. And Commissioner J. Scott Imler, he's not here tonight. The commissioners are also are appointed by the governor and serve staggered four-year terms. As a commission, they have jurisdiction to oversee a number of industries. To assist the commission in this role, they have a staff of professionals in fields like accounting, economics, and engineering who are available to provide guidance. <clears throat> the commission staff themselves are state of Kansas employees or consultants hired by the state. They have a tremendous amount of professional knowledge and training in fields such as accounting, economics, engineering, and financial analysis. Many of our staff members have earned master's degrees or PhDs. We have members with us here today as I pointed out. Uh, they'll be here to answer questions if you guys have any after the after uh, this is done. 
during the proceeding before the commission staff advocates for the public generally, which is another way of saying they balance interest of all utility customers, the long-term health of the utility company and the state of Kansas. Staff attempts to weigh numerous competing interests and develop a position that serves everyone as best as it can. Empire's rate case application was filed last December. Empire requested an initial increase of $4.9 million. About half of that requested is already reflected in your rates through surcharges. And as Jill was pointed out before, uh, the real net request for, that Empire is asking is $2.5 million. Since Empire has about 9,000 Kansas uh, customers, this request works out to about $20 per month for the average residential customer. There are a number of elements that make up a request like Empire's. One key driver of the case is the investment of the utility is made to provide service to its customers. Another is return on equity or ROE. Just like investments you, you may have yourself, utilities request a certain return on their investments. Just because they request something does not mean staff will agree. And even if we did agree, that does not necessarily guarantee the utility is uh, their requested return. Generally speaking, it's a request to have the opportunity to earn something, not the right to earn something. Across the country, ROE is one of the most heavily litigated elements in a utility rate case. And you can be certain that uh, staff is scrutinizing Empire's request closely. And that scrutiny applies to all elements of Empire's rate case, from the riders to the rate design. You can be sure the commission staff is going to be throwing over the request cover to cover, auditing and verifying elements of the case. I'd like to provide a little bit of context of the rate case process. Some of you may be wondering why we have rate cases in Kansas. In short, through regulation of the electric industry, electric utilities are granted territorial monopolies and are, their rates are regulated by Kansas Corporation Commission. Under Kansas law, rates for electric service must be just and reasonable. This legal requirement means rates must be sufficient to cover the utility's operating expenses and provide a reasonable level of return on the utilities investments. As I said, my name is Cole. And I'm with, you, with me tonight is my co-counsel, Robert Vinson. He, um, I think some of you spoke with him earlier today. Um, our job is to represent the commission's technical staff and to make their case for the commission. The reason we do this is be, because in certain situations, the commission acts just like a court. The commissioners act as judges. They hear and weigh evidence. Witnesses testify in front of them and issues orders that can be appealed to higher courts in the state. Technical staff acts as a party to the case. It develops and defends its own positions, recognizing that technical staff's duty is owed to the state of Kansas and the public generally. Here's how it works in theory. The KCC is a state agency. <clears throat> At the top of it are three commissioners. In a formal proceeding like this rate case, there are different parties. This includes utility, the commissioners, technical staff, CURB, and numerous other interveners representing a variety of interests. As you can see, all three of these are separate parties to the case. And even though the commissioner's staff works with commission, we independently develop and recommend our own position on the issues. Just like a court, it's an attorney's job to represent their client's case to the commissioners. That's where Robert and I fit in. Once an application for a rate increase is filed, commission staff conducts an independent review of the company's request. This review includes an in-depth examination of the company's finances, which allows staff to evaluate the application for accuracy and compliance with Kansas law and commission's regulations. The investigation also includes identification of any positive or negative impacts on customers, the utility, and the public generally. During this investigation, staff determines which cost the utility is entitled to recover in rates, that is the cost necessary to provide electric service, and those costs that are not appropriate for, to recover from the customers. Finally, staff also evaluates the structure of the utility's rates to ensure that they are fair and based on underlying costs to serve the customers. After its investigation is complete, staff submits written testimony that indicates its position on the application and staff actively participates in the rate case process by advocating for its position. 
Staff's role is not to help one party over another, but rather to provide independent assistance to the commissioners in balancing competing interests and evaluating the total impact of the application on the public. The remaining deadlines are on the screen. Um, under the current schedule, staff and intervener testimony is due May 13th. Staff and intervener cross-answering testimony is due a week after that on May 20th. Empire will file rebuttal testimony on May 31st. And for you, the public comment period will end at five o'clock on June 14th. So if you intend to submit a comment in this docket, you must submit your comment before that date. The commission will hold an evidentiary hearing on Empire's request beginning June 25th and, uh, and a commission order deciding the matter will be issued on the 29th of August. If you have any additional questions about the case, commission staff is here and available to answer any questions this evening, or you can contact commissioner's Office of Public Affairs and Consumer Protection. And I'll leave this screen up, but uh, the first way you can make a comment in the docket is in person tonight. Uh, comments will go on record and your comment will be part of the docket. Or there are three convenient ways for you to make your comment directly to the Public Affairs Office online, by mail, or by the phone. The information for each of these is on the screen. You can also follow these proceedings on our website. You can just go to the kcc.com docket filings tab, enter the docket number, which is 19223, and you can see all filings that have been made. The KCC staff would like to thank you for coming out, participating in the public hearing tonight. We welcome questions you may have for commission staff. I'm just gonna leave that up there. Thank you, Cole. Um, this concludes the first part of tonight's proceeding. Um, hopefully it helped you understand what Empire is requesting and what the process the commission follows in evaluating and making its decision. Um, in part two, the commissioners will listen to your comments, but they're not permitted to engage in any kind of dialogue or to answer your questions. They're merely here to listen to what you have to say. Um, the court reporter will record your statements. Um, if you prefer to submit written comments rather than speak uh, tonight, uh, you may do so. Uh, if you have a particularly lengthy comment, it may be best to submit them in writing. Um, they, they will be treated the same whether they be made here today, made online, via uh, phone, they, they will be given equal weight. Uh, the commissioners consider your comments important to their decision making. Uh, the legislature has charged the commission uh, with the, the responsibility of balancing both the utility and ratepayers' interests to arrive at a decision which best serves the public interest. Uh, if you wish to address the commission with comments tonight, uh, please complete the sign-in sheet, which I believe is uh, just outside the door uh, with our public affairs staff. Um, and. If, if you do have a written comment, um, when, when you cut, please, you'll come up to the microphone in the uh, center of the aisle there. Please identify yourself um, so the court reporter can take down your name. Um, and if you have any written comments you want to submit tonight, you can also hand those to the court reporter. Um, with that, uh, I think we'll take a break before we begin part two. So uh, that'll, that'll give everybody some time to stretch their legs or if you want to put your name down on the, the comment sheet. Um, you can do so. So we'll, we'll take about a five to 10 minute break right now. Thank you. Good evening again. I'm calling to order the Kansas Corporation Commission public hearing regarding docket number 19-EPDE-223-RTS. This docket was initiated by Empire for the purposes of requesting a rate increase. My name is Dwight Keene. I am the chairman of the Kansas Corporation Commission. I'm joined this evening by my colleague, uh, Commissioner Sherry Feist Albrecht, and we both uh, join in uh, welcoming you and thanking you for attendance at this public meeting. 
It's an honor for both of us to join with you here in Southeast Kansas. We, uh, we enjoy being in this part of the state and uh, we're grateful for your attendance. This hearing is on the record and the transcript will become an important part of the official docket file. May I have the appearances of counsel, please? Yes, good evening, Your Honor. Uh, James G. Flaherty, Ottawa, Kansas, appearing on behalf of the applicant, the Empire District Electric Company. Thank you. Todd Love and David Nickel appearing on behalf of the Citizens Utility Rate Pair Board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Albrecht, Robert Vincent, and Cole Bailey appearing on commission staff and the public generally. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Does the staff have a, uh, a recommendation regarding notice? Uh, yes, uh, January 29th, an order setting procedural schedule was filed uh, for today to have this public hearing, March 28th. On March 20th, Empire filed two affidavits swearing they placed an ad in the paper and mailed to the customers. Notice to all the customers, staff recommends finding a notice proper. Very well. If there are no objections, I will find that notice was proper and the commission has jurisdiction. Again, thank you for attending. This hearing is an important step in uh, our process of evaluating this request for a rate increase, and we look forward to hearing your comments. We cannot engage in dialogue with you during the proceeding. However, we may ask questions for clarification. Uh, I have a list of individuals who have indicated they would like to comment, and we will call you in the order in which you appear on this list. So if you're ready to go, so are we. Uh, first individual up is uh, Paula Woods. My great-grandfather came to this county 150 years ago, and I've lived here all my life, so I can take the long view of what has happened in this county and the financial condition of many people who reside in this county. And traditionally, the people of Cherokee County have unfortunately uh, lived in a county that has been ranked as one of the poorest counties in the state. We have many retired people. We have many people who are living below the poverty level. Also, many people here who are on pensions uh, have not had a cost of living increase for, in some cases, a decade or more. People who are in Social Security certainly are not getting a 15% raise that is being, I understand, requested from uh, Liberty Empire at this time. Um, it becomes a question of when does an increase in a bill t is reaching a tipping point beyond which that it becomes egregious for the citizenry. And I believe this 15% increase crosses the line. I believe it's exorbitant. And we look as citizens to the Kansas Corporation Commission and CURB because it's my understanding that we were originally formed to protect we the people from exorbitant increases in utility rates. We have many people in this county who now are choosing between utilities, food, medicine, everything is increasing. And the last thing we need is a 15% increase on our electric bills. Also, from the standpoint of the financial health of Liberty Empire, obviously, they're doing fine because otherwise a foreign corporation wouldn't have wanted to acquire them. Which raises another point. When we look at the United States and the local economy, a large part of this increase, if it is improved, if it was approved, uh, will not benefit our United States or local economy because Empire Liberty is now owned by a foreign corporation. So that has to be a consideration too. So as I said, we're looking to you, the Kansas Corporation Commission, to recall why you were formulated initially to protect we the people from exorbitant 
increases in rates by utilities, which this is one. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. The next individual is Jim Von Weedel. <clears throat> Thank you. In our local newspaper, the article stated, I think it was in last week, said you are asking for an annual increase. Are you wanting 15% every year is my question, or one of my questions. And that, to me, that's what annual means. Also, uh, I wish that my electric bill would only go up $20. Looking at my bills, and we just have an average house, it's gonna go up 30 to $40 a month on the amount of electricity we use and we're not e using exorbitantly great amounts of electricity. <clears throat> when uh, the people that rely solely on their social security get a 2.3% cost of living increase, the electric company raises their rates 15%, the, uh, the utility, other utilities like water and gas and everybody else, they raise theirs to cover the price of electricity. Uh, the grocery stores raise the price of electricity. The poor person is going to go farther downstream and farther in the hole, and they're going to end up, Empire's going to get to come out and shut their electricity off. And you're just going to starve, your, starve the people out. I would not be uh, upset as much if you just simply ask for a 2.3 or 2.5 percent increase instead of 15 percent. I think that's exorbitant. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next individual is Glenda McCollum. I come tonight to explain perhaps some of the low income and the elderly, some of their struggles that they have. I work with our churches. Um, they, they give out um, food. We give out around 60 families food every other week. There are two other churches I know in town that also did, that also give out food. So we are talking about people that don't have enough to eat. 15% is absolutely ridiculous because I'm one of those that's on Social Security. Whatever increase we got we went right back to pay Medicare or our supplemental. <coughs> I'd, I'd have to say, is, is Empire losing money? Because we are. We're losing money every year. Our taxes go up. And, and Empire has us a locked down. They have a locked down market on us. We can't go out and say, hmm, I'm gonna find some electric over here that's cheaper, like we do gasoline or whatever. We have to have your insurance or your your electric. We can't go someplace else. So we are stuck. And the only thing that we can do is move out of state. And there are people doing that. And I hate that for my town. I, um, I just would like you to think of the people that are really underprivileged right now. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. The next individual is uh, Rick Christensen. I too am speaking for the lower income people and the numbers 
we do not have the numbers here in Southeast Kansas that they have in Missouri and other places in the area, you move up to Kansas City and stuff. And without the numbers, you're, you're just uh, burying people with 15% that they're already on the borderline. We lose more people when everything keeps going up. The cost of everything here keeps going up. It's so like she said, there's more people moving across the state line every day because of taxes and uh, with 15%, which does seem extreme to me also, uh, it just seems too much. Thank you, sir. The next individual, Jill Nelson. All right, thank you. Paul Hamilton. I don't know whether this pertains to it, but with this raise, these elderly people that are living day to day and buying uh, prescriptions have got to decide whether to pay their utility bills or buy prescriptions or whatever. It's wrong. This is, you know, they've already recouped so much, so many millions of dollars and uh, I just can't see a, a raise. But I'm more worried about the elderly people that are living on fixed income. Uh, you take, like on my bill, we were figuring it up out there with this increase, it's gonna raise my bill if it stays pretty much the same, almost a hundred bucks a month. That's a lot of money for me. You know, you guys got to decide, but, you know, think about the people. Thank you, sir. Karen Ingruff. Right. Matt Ingruff. Yeah, my name is Matt Ingruff. I live in Cherokee County, Columbus here all my life. Uh, my question to Empire would be, uh, have you guys cut any overhead? Have you guys made any changes to your guys' side? Because I know I can't go ask my boss for a raise, sit in front of everyone, ask for a raise because my daycare goes up, my uh, taxes go up, my electrical goes up. I've, uh, I've been working a job for about six years. As I figured up from six years today, I make the same amount of money. I've lost almost $12,000 deal between utilities, daycare, and uh, taxes. Everyone in Cherokee County is taking a big hit on the taxes right now. Right at the same time, we get hit by you guys. So my question to you guys, I've heard a lot of people talk about elderly people, kids. I can probably afford it. But you guys need to think about the other people who can't afford it. Do you guys feel comfortable sitting at night thinking about an 80 year old, 90 year old man turning his electric down in the cold or a family has four or six kids turning their heaters down the cold or sitting in the heat of 100 degree weather? If you guys can sleep comfortable at night, you're a different person than I am. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Frida Colbert. My name is Freda Colbert. I've lived in Cherokee County almost all of my life. Unfortunately, I am on disability and I have a set income. I do not have the kind of money that comes from <laughs> places like utilities get up. How, I agree with what Matt said. Is the overhead of the utility company being in check with what we're being put upon us? We don't need this added expense because medication, food, 
And in my years of taking care of patients, I have seen people do without bandages. And what is this going to do when they have to pay an added $20 a month? That may be all they have to live on for the next month. And I think the utility companies really need to tighten their belts and stop putting the pressure down on the uh, Cherokee County people. We are one of the poorest counties in this state, and it is a great state. It's the reason I have not moved from Kansas. But you know, Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma are very close and it wouldn't take much to put a for sale sign up and move away. And this may be the final straw for a lot of people that can move. There's people that are just stuck here that live in houses that have no insulation, their windows are horrible. And until everyone witnesses someone living like that and having bug infestation because they don't have the money to go buy food or, uh, pest control, this company needs to really consider what these disadvantaged people are doing. And trust me, by being a registered nurse for almost 30 years and then I became disabled, I don't see the point. You all need to consider what the overhead expenses are and quit donating so much money to uh, organizations and getting yourselves in the paper that's where you could save some money and you could also lower this bill and not make it higher or put wind turbines in save some money put some the solar systems in for people especially low-income people something needs to be done and it's in your hands please consider the people of Cherokee County thank you thank you for your testimony Laura Atkinson. Hi, my name is Laura Atkinson. I've lived here my entire life. Um, my husband and I raised cattle on a farm my grandfather started. Um, our average bill, we figure, is going to go up between 40 and $50 a month, uh, which is quite a bit of money for us. Uh, my husband already has a, another job just to make ends meet. Um, the thing I have questions about, which I know I can't ask questions, but it was said the rate of return, um, Empire wants a rate of return of 10.2%, while other Kansas utilities have about 1% less than that. So I'm thinking, you know, why, why does Empire need so much more, a 1% more profit than the other utility companies in the area. Um, it, could there be costs that could be cut, you know, to avoid this large increase? Another thing that kind of concerned me was the Asbury and Riverton cost recovery programs, I understand were required by EPA and there's nothing you can do about that. But to me, when something on my bill says cost recovery, to me, once you recover that cost, that should disappear off your bill. But you're saying now that these two cost recoveries are going to be rolled into the base rate, which means to me, it's just gonna stay there forever. So I'm really concerned about that. I really feel like there's you know, other means you can do. And also you're increasing the customer charge $3 a month, that's on top of everything else. And I, this county's poor. We do everything we can. I'm concerned that if our rates go up, the rates are gonna go up for the rural water district. So the rural water district's gonna to have to increase their rates and everything's gonna increase. So I thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. There are no more names of people who wish to speak on my list. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard this evening? Please, if you would please, when you come up to the microphone, uh, please, uh, for the benefit of the court reporter, uh, state your name, if you would. My name is Steve Dunlap. Um, I would like to ask, 
what was the increase in 2012? And then knowing that increase, I would like to know what is the justification of increasing 15% this time? Obviously Empire makes a lot of money or this company Liberty would not be here or bought it. So obviously they're making a profit. I understand that uh, through the grapevine or things you hear that they're gonna do away with the Asbury brand. I don't know if that's truth or not. Then I also heard that you guys are gonna invest in wind termite. That may be true, maybe not. But you know, once you increase something 15%, there are other utilities, city utilities, other things, their increase, they've got to pass it along. And they're going to pass it along to the customers. And this community cannot stand 15% increase. I hope CURB understands that and their justification of this increase. I just hope you really consider that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Please. Again, if you would please uh, uh, proceed to your name uh, for the benefit of the court reporter. Okay, uh, Vicki Eldridge. I live outside of Baxter Springs, Kansas. We are totally electric at our house. Our rate went from $12.94, the customer charge, to $14. They also raised uh, our cost adjustment thing and all, and we went from like $200 a month to $416 a month. And, that's a little hard to take. I mean, we've got other expenses too, you know, and uh, our basically our rate doubled last month, and this month it's practically tripled. Okay. I'd like to understand why it's going up so dang much. I understand you got a 15% raise for producing the power or whatever, but dang, you guys have to take it out for the pay for it for the first year? I strongly object. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for your testimony as well. Does anyone else wish to speak this evening? Is there anyone else who wants to make any supplementing or clarifying statements? Very well. Um, as a reminder, the public comment period will remain open through June 14th. 2019 at 5 p.m. Options for submitting comments can be found in the materials that have been handed out to you this evening. The evidentiary hearing on this matter is scheduled to begin in Topeka on June 25th, 2019 at 9.30 a.m. in the Commission's Topeka office. The Commission must issue a decision on or before August 29th, 2019. This concludes the public hearing. Thank you once again for your participation. We are adjourned.